So for the past few days, I have been using an iPhone 11 to see just how it still holds up in 2023. The phone is absolutely so amazing. It's nearing the four-year-old mark at this point, but it still holds up quite remarkably in 2023 because Apple is able to support these phones for such an extended period of time. This phone is still going to be getting iOS 17, and it's probably going to be getting an iOS or two after that, which is just remarkable. That's one of the reasons this still holds up quite well. Another reason is just smartphone technology has not advanced and changed that much. We're still using the same way to enter the phone. We're still using Face ID on this phone as we are on the latest and greatest smartphones. It's not quite as good as the Touch ID on the old 6S, which I still really like, and I cracked the screen on it, which is too bad. But it, it still is such a remarkable way to get into the phone. The cameras are still really good. They definitely hold up, especially for taking pictures and videos. I feel like I can kind of tell a little bit. I can always tell when a phone is taking a video, but this is definitely a phone camera through and through. But I would say for the photos that this camera takes, they still hold up pretty good in 2023. Compared to my old 13 Pro, obviously they're not as good. This was a budget model when it first came out, and it's a budget model to this day because now it's three, four years old at this point. So I think if, if you're somebody that's looking to spend a few hundred bucks on a smartphone that has Face ID that's going to be getting support for a few more years, I think the iPhone 11 is still a wonderful option. The things to note about this phone that aren't going to be that great is the lack of removable battery. This phone, obviously, no iPhone has ever had a removable battery, but this phone specifically, getting into this phone is going to be very, very difficult because this is an all glass phone. I mean, it's all glass in the back, all glass in the front, which means getting into it's gonna be significantly more difficult. Replacing the battery on my 6S really wasn't that hard, and the main reason it wasn't that hard was because there's nothing to break back here. This is metal, so if I bend it just a little bit, or I scratch it a little bit, it's no big deal. It's not going to crack and shatter in my hands. Whereas the back of this phone is glass. So you have to deal with that. This phone that I'm using was used by the previous owner for four years. Every single day. It was their daily driver for four years. So the battery percentage, the battery health is at 73%. And it's saying a battery warning. And you can see that here. Battery health and charge. Serve it. It's at the service percentage, basically. 73% um, maximum capacity. I haven't really noticed anything. I've been using this phone for a few days. And I haven't really noticed any of the battery life yet. I'm not the biggest and heaviest smartphone user. If you're a heavier smartphone user, you're probably going to be grabbing the charging cable a lot more often. This is obviously significantly better still than my iPhone 6S battery life, but that's this isn't really the best comparison. It's just the one that is most apt to me because this is the phone that I was using and have been using for the last two, three months at this point. Um, I would say... The negatives with this phone beyond the battery are going to be you're missing the headphone jack, which is a weird thing to complain about. But now that I've had a headphone jack for an extended period of time, I do. It's kind of a nice thing to have in a pinch. I did. I've only used it, I think, two times. But having used it twice, it's a nice thing to have. You're gonna obviously miss out on that. I mean, I don't think any smartphone now has a headphone jack. I mean, ultimately, this phone is so incredible. If you were thinking about buying one of these and you have the money saved up. I think it's a great purchase. I really do. I've really enjoyed using it probably too much, but all the apps work so well. Everything works so seamlessly. It just, it's a very good and functional device. Keeping in mind that at the time of this release, this was the budget model. But I mean, honestly, I've had, I used an iPhone 11 for two years before I got the 13 Pro and then, and then the success. The older the phone is, the actual, the way the math works out, I've, I've sat down and done this before, but the way the math works out, is actually a better purchase the older the phone is. The cost per year goes down significantly, and because Apple supports smartphones for such an extended period of time, you're actually getting kind of a discount on a per year basis, as opposed to buying the latest and greatest and holding it for five years. It's cheaper to buy this phone and use it for two and then sell it back. So I think buying a used iPhone is always a great thing to do. This phone is remarkable. I love every little bit about it. Face ID works amazing. The speakers are loud. Everything about it is such an improvement from the 6S. So if you're coming from a 6S, a 7, a 6, a 6 Plus, 6S Plus, whatever it may be, it's a great upgrade. Most people, I, I can't imagine anybody having any problems with this device. I think if you have a problem with this device, you're probably just using your smartphone too much. And I think that's a bigger issue than the phone. So I would suggest that if you are using your smartphone that much to make sure to use it a little bit less and um, if you have problems with this phone, it's probably on you and not anybody else.
And finally, the last negative is going to be the lack of a zoom camera. That is a really useful feature. It's not as useful as a wide. I shoot most things in wide. This camera's shooting on a wide right now. The camera above me is shooting at like a 35 mil. But the lack of zoom, there's the lack of a zoom lens on this camera is not good. And I, it's not something you need all the time, but it's it's one of those things where it's like, you, you'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So if you're a big photo taker on cameras, I would suggest trying to find an iPhone, a uh, slightly newer one with a telephoto lens just because of that. But if I had to choose between a wide and a normal main shooting lens and just having to use digital zoom on that lens, I would choose that combo over a telephoto and the main, the main lens with digital zoom or whatever. I think wide shots look better. You can capture more moments, capture wider memories and you can experience more things so i'm much more of a wide shooter but obviously you can tell that by this video thank you for watching i will see you in the next one this has been scott with Tech Night clips peace out